y'all. Welcome to our channel, Crafting Cousins. If you're new here, welcome. And if you are returning, Trisha and I thank you so much. Today is a special video. It is for the birds. We have 10 DIYs for you, especially themed to your birds that are returning now for spring. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use these two little baskets that I picked up from the thrift store for $1.79 each, some duct tape, a scrap piece of fabric, some flexible wire, I got mine from the Dollar Tree, some twine, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I need to be able to cut a hole in the side of my basket so that my birds can go in and out but I was afraid that if I didn't secure it somehow, it was gonna fall apart because it is just woven together. So I took some duct tape and I put a piece on the outside and then lined up another piece on the inside. Then I got afraid that my hole was gonna go be bigger than my duct tape, so I added another piece at the bottom. Now I'm gonna use a cookie cutter and I just draw a circle on my duct tape and then I'm gonna use my Zacto knife to cut it out. This worked perfectly. This duct tape held this together so well. It did not fray at all. It did not try to come apart. Now you do notice though when I'm using my Zacto knife that I am not dragging it around the circle, I am punching it in and out. And I think this put less stress on the weave and it came out perfectly. I did use my scissors to trim it up just a little bit, but I was really happy with how it looked. Now I do want to make sure that it's not going to come apart when it's outside in the weather. So I cut off some small pieces of my duct tape and I just wrap them around the edge of my circle. And this is going to hold it together and keep it from unraveling. This, I also made sure that I layered it. And when you're layering it over each other, it just gives it more strength. I didn't like how that duct tape looked though, so I did grab a scrap piece of fabric to cover it with. I used some hot glue and went around and I put the hot glue on the basket and then pressed the fabric down into it and it really got a really good hold. I was happy with how that worked. Once I got around to the end, I secured it and trimmed it off and then I'm just going to shove it through and I'm gonna use my scissors to cut some slits in the fabric. Otherwise, it is not going to lay down flat. You're gonna have a mess. Then I just put some hot glue on the back and pushed my fabric down into it and trimmed it off and I had the perfect opening for my birds. Now we can join our two baskets together. I cut four pieces of my wire and I shove them through the holes right under the rim. This is going to give it extra strength. I did try to make sure that I got them as evenly spaced as possible, but I didn't measure them. Before I add my other basket on top though, I want to add a hanger. So I took some twine and pushed it up under where these overlap each other and then I pulled it up and tied it in a knot and this gave me a hanger. Now we can add our little basket to the top of our other basket. I push the wire through those little openings right under the rim on my little basket. I made sure to do that in all four places before I start tightening it down. Then I just twist it together. I trim it off and push the ends right up under the basket. And with that, this project is complete. Our little house is ready for a bird family. Hey y'all, this is Kay. Let's grab a few materials and get started on this birdhouse. 
I'm going to be using one of these $5 birdhouses that I got at the Dollar Tree recently. I'm also going to be using one of these boards that I got from the Dollar Tree, some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree, some mastic caulk from the Dollar Tree, some one gallon paint stirrer sticks, some Waverly chalk paint in the colors white and ink, one cross charm that I got in a package probably from Hobby Lobby. It's about one and a half inches tall. And then several types of glue. I'm going to be using some wood glue, some Elmer's glue, and either some super glue fix all adhesive or E6000 and hot glue. So the first thing I'm going to do is get out my heat gun and I'm going to heat up these pieces on top, the little dormers, and take those off because we won't be using those in this project. I am going to leave the chimney type part at the top and I will later just put a clear coat on it because that secured the handle really well. Then I'm just going to draw around the top piece of my project so that I can get the angle for the roof to cut my pieces that I'm going to use. But the good news is once I got out to my miter saw, Everything was 45 degree angle, so easy to cut. You will need six paint stirrer sticks, and the first two I'm going to cut at the same height as this side of my birdhouse. And I'm just going to lay out two sticks, and I'll put the point side right in the middle of the two sticks. So it made it really easy. Five gallon paint stirrer sticks would work, except they're way too wide for this particular birdhouse. But there it is, the top of the box and I'll just lay that down each time and fold it to the different heights that I need. The next two sets that I'm going to cut will be at about eight and a half inches tall and 11 inches tall, which are the two lengths of paper, so it's easy to remember. I took some painter's tape and I'm just going to tape my sticks together in the middle and then I'll lay down each of my lengths and I will draw on the points and then I'll go back later to my miter saw and I'm going to cut those out. For the two shorter measurements, it's very easy to make sure that it's solid on the piece of wood. But for the 11 inch measurement, what we're going to do is make sure we put those cutouts on the paint stirrer sticks towards the bottom because we can cover them up once we place everything on the birdhouse. You will see what I mean later. Basically, what we're going to do is place the shorter one on first and fill in that gap at the top. Then we'll place on the taller one and then the medium size length. Because you have that overhang at the top of the birdhouse, I'm going to make a filler piece, if you will, to fill in the gaps before we place on our two outer pieces. So I'm taking some tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to place on some wood glue and some hot glue. And we start at the bottom and place one across and center it as best as possible. And once we do that, we're just going to fill in the sides by placing three on each side, hot glue and wood glue. And then I'll place one towards the peak at the top, just slide it in between my two layers. And that gives stability and bumps everything out so that it's even with the roof line. I do let the glue set up and then I come in and again place wood glue and hot glue on the back. And then we'll place our piece down and it fills in and bumps out the front of the birdhouse. Then we'll take our tallest piece and we'll do the same thing with hot glue and wood glue. And you can see the little cutouts there at the bottom I told you about. And before we place on the next piece, what I'm going to do is decide how long I want this board to be that I'm going to mount the birdhouse to. And I end up cutting off two inches from the end. And I'm just going to center my birdhouse on my board. I'm going to use wood glue and hot glue. And then also I'm going to use some nail brads from my heavy duty stapler just to make sure everything is nice and secure here at the bottom. And this is what we have so far. Now I'm going to come in with that last piece we cut, which was the medium size length at about eight and a half inches tall. Use some wood glue and some hot glue and secure it there to the front and it hides that gap. I'm going to take a couple of popsicle sticks to make the roof line for my two peaks here in the front. I'm just cutting them to size, custom cutting each time to make sure I get it like I want it. And then I'm going to come in with some hot glue and glue it on the top of the peaks. For the bottom one, it's going to be flush with the wood. And for the top one, I'm going to center them each time. For the roof, I'm going to come in with some caulking from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to apply it quite liberally and then use a skewer and kind of swirl it around on the top for several reasons. This is going to give us texture and it just makes for a prettier roof. 
It's going to hide the mess I made when I took off those dormers, but also it's going to make it a little more durable for the outside weather. For a door for the front of the piece, I'm going to take one of those scrap pieces that came off when I cut the pieces for the front, and, and I just use a water bottle cap to get a rounded edge on the front. And I'm just going to use my wire cutters and just keep hacking at it until I get it close to the edge. And once I do that, I'll just use some sandpaper to sand it off and make sure it's smooth. I decided instead of painting the piece, I would just use a furniture repair marker from the Dollar Tree and use the stain in the color black and do the edges and the front. That way some of the wood will show through. Now I'm going to start out painting the actual part of my birdhouse in the color black. I'm not going to paint the entire piece. You'll see I leave out the bottom base there. But I'm going to paint the roof really solid, make sure that's covered. And then for the sides and the front of the birdhouse, it's not so important because I'm going to use this when I antique the piece, if you will. You want to let everything dry extremely well. And then the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the base on the sides of the base and the bottom in the Waverly White chalk paint. And then I will allow that to dry as well. Lots of drying in this project. I let everything dry for about four hours. And then I'm going to come in with my Elmer's glue and give it just a medium sized coating, I guess you, if you will. And you don't let it dry. You just come back immediately with your white chalk paint Put on a good medium sized coating again and then I'm going to come in with my heat tool and immediately dry the piece. That causes that crackling effect to age your birdhouse. And that's what I'm going to do on both sides and the front. I'm going to speed it up considerably to let you see how I did it. But for the front, I'm going to go off camera and do that because I need to be a little more intricate with everything. It takes a lot more time and I was really careful with it. And of course, I left all of my roof lines in the black chalk paint. Now I'm going to take that little cross that I have and I'm going to cut off the loop at the top using my jewelry pliers. And I'm going to use E6000 to glue it onto the birdhouse towards the top. And I'm going to apply the door the same way using the E6000 and my hot glue. I'm going to center it down towards the bottom on the front. For a window, kind of on the front of the birdhouse here, sort of in the middle, I'm going to use one of those wooden letter O's from the Dollar Tree. I painted it in white. Then I'm going to place it down on my piece, trace out the circle in the middle, and then I will paint that with the black chalk paint. And then finally, I will glue down that letter O to be the frame for our window at the top. I later came back with a pencil and kind of dirtied up the color a little bit because I thought it stood out too much. And then I couldn't leave things alone, so I took a wood screw and I'm going to screw it down onto the door to be the handle for the door. And then of course I'll paint it in black chalk paint so it's not so bright. After everything cures for a couple of weeks, I will come in with a clear coat and coat it really well so that it can withstand the weather. But I love it, y'all. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these little mini grapevine wreaths that I got from Hobby Lobby. I thought I was going to join two of them together, but I decided I really only needed one. One of these clear bowls from the Dollar Tree, you get like five in a pack, some twine, and some flexible wire from the Dollar Tree. I need to put two little holes into our bowl so that I can put the wire through there and attach it to my grapevine wreath. I took my hot glue gun to melt the holes in here and 
I have to tell you, these are some good bowls. It did not want to melt through. This is some thick plastic. It would push the plastic through and I had to take my scissors and kind of clip it off, but eventually I was able to get two holes. Now I'm going to fit it into my grapevine wreaths to see which one fits best. Then I'll cut two pieces of my wire, stick it through my holes, and then I'll wrap it around the grapevine wreath and twist it together. Once you get that done, all you have to do is trim off the ends of it and push it down into your grapevine wreath and it's going to hold perfectly. To make a hanger, I took some twine and I measured up to see how far I wanted it to hang and then I cut double that length and then I cut another piece the same length and cut those in half. This give me four pieces of twine. To attach it to my grapevine wreath, I push it down between the grapevine wreath and the bowl and then I bring it around and tie a double knot and trim it off. I did try to make sure that these were spaced pretty evenly, but I didn't measure them. I just pretty much eyeballed it. Once you get those on, we're going to pull all four of them up to the center, joining them together. Then I'll tie a knot in the end and trim it off, and our little feeder is ready for some mealworms for our bluebirds. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to be using this old creamer bottle that I saved from the trash, some Krylon spray paint, I'm using the hammered, some acrylic paint, I'm using folk art baby pink, these cute stamps that I got from the Dollar Tree, and a stamp pad, and some twine. The first thing we need to do is remove the plastic from the outside of this bottle. It comes off really easily if you just clip it. And then we're going to take it outside and spray paint it. Now you don't necessarily have to do this step. I wanted to spray paint it because I wanted the texture that that hammered paint gives projects. And it's also going to give me a coating so I don't have to use as many coats of my acrylic paint. Now that we have the plastic off, we'll take it outside, paint it, and leave it to dry. Once our paint is dry, I need to make an opening for my birds to come in and out of. So I'm using a cookie cutter to draw a circle, and then I'm going to take my Zacto knife and cut it out. Now I do come back at the end and smooth this out with a fingernail file so that it doesn't hurt the birds as they're going in and out. Now I want to paint it with my baby pink acrylic paint and I'm using one of those sponge brushes that you get from the Dollar Tree, the round ones, and I'm just bouncing it on so that I can um, keep the texture that was provided by that hammered spray paint. We are going to go all over our bottle. I think I ended up giving it about one and a half coats. And then we're also going to cover our lid and we'll set it aside and let it dry. Now that my paint is dry, I'm going to take a fingernail file and just go around the opening of this. And this just smooths it out and makes it nicer for the birds so they don't catch on any edges that were left whenever we cut it. To add a hanger, I'm going to use my Zacto knife and start a little hole and then I'll use my awl to open it up with. Then we can take our twine, and I never measure mine. I just pull off a piece, and then we're going to stick both ends through that hole. Now, I did have to take a pin to help push it down in there because it's a little bit thick, but that's fine. Now, you'll pull it through, make a double knot on the end, and then pull it back up, and that is going to give us our hanger. Before I close this up, I do want to add some hot glue because I want this to be permanently closed. Now we'll screw it back on our bottle and now we get to decorate. 
I'm going to use these stamps that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I think they are so cute. They have really stepped their game up when it comes to their stamps. And to hold my stamp, I take one of those plastic cutting mats that you can get from Dollar Tree and I just cut it down and the stamp sticks perfectly to it. And since it's flexible, you can push it down the way you need to. Now we'll ink up our stamp and then we press it against our bottle and it transfers the image onto it. Now you see that in those ridges, the image did not really transfer, but that's okay. I have a solution for that at the end. I added these flowers on here. I put some of those cute little butterflies and then I added a couple of bees. I thought it would be cute to have one there on the top and then a couple around the openings. Now to fix the area that didn't fill in in those ridges, I decided to just take a pencil and kind of fill it in and that just takes care of everything. It looks like it was meant to be and once you get that done, this project is complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these plastic party trays that I got from Dollar General for a dollar. They also have them at Dollar Tree. A divided tray that I also got from Dollar General, but they carry these at Dollar Tree as well. Some plastic wine glasses that I picked up from Dollar Tree. A plant hanger from the Dollar Tree. Some floral foam. Some fix-all adhesive and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I want to start off by gluing the bottom of this wine glass on so that it doesn't come apart and my feeder fall apart. So I'm just gonna use some fix-all adhesive and some hot glue and that's gonna set up well. Then we're going to glue it into the middle of our divided tray but I knew I wasn't going to have enough surface area to glue it down. So I grabbed some floral foam and I cut out a circle that would fit into my wine glass. Then we'll just use some fix-all adhesive and a little bit of hot glue on the inside of the glass and push our foam down in there. And now we have a surface that we can use to glue this into our tray. I'll put some fix-all adhesive in the bottom of the tray and then I'm gonna put some hot glue around the edge of the wine glass and this is just going to hold it in place until that fix-all adhesive sets. Before we add the tray onto the top of this, I need to add my hanger. So I spread it out and made sure that I had it pretty close to being even. Then I took a marker and I put some places where I knew I needed to make holes and I took my hot glue gun and I melted it into this tray to make my holes. Now I wish I would have used one of my bigger hot glue guns. This one is one of the precision tip and it was really just too small. Um, I was able to get the clips in there but I would have preferred to have a bigger hole. So if I do another one of these, I'll definitely use a bigger hot glue gun. Once I got my holes, I take those little clips and I just push them through there. You can see it was a little hard to get them in there, but I was able to get them in there without breaking the tray and that's a plus. Now we can add the top to our bird feeder. I'm going to put some fix-all adhesive right around the rim of the bottom of the glass and then I'll add a little bit of hot glue just to hold it in place until that can set. Then we're going to center our top onto the bottom of the glass and we have a bird feeder. Hey y'all, it's Trish. This is going to be a super easy way to make a bird feeder. You're gonna need some cardboard. I'm going to use this little box, some peanut butter, any kind will do, it doesn't matter. 
some bird seed, any kind will do, and a little bit of twine. I took my box apart so that I would have two pieces of cardboard because I was wanting to make two feeders. Then I freehand a heart onto one of them and cut that out. I'll use that heart as a template to cut another one out of my other piece of cardboard. Yours do not have to be heart shaped. You can make them any shape that you want them to be. Now I'm going to take my scissors and punch a hole into the corner of each one of my hearts and then I'm going to cut off two pieces of twine to use as hangers. I'll fold that in half and stick the loop through the hole, then I'll pull the ends through the loop and I have a hanger. Now you do see me tie a knot in mine at the end, but when I got outside it wouldn't loop over my branch so I ended up cutting that off so that I could tie it around so you really don't have to do that step. Now we're going to take our peanut butter and you're going to completely cover one side of your cardboard. I even covered the twine. It doesn't matter. You do want it to be kind of thick. You don't want it falling off when you hold it up, but you want to have it thick enough that your seed are going to stick into it. Then you're going to pour your seed over it, push it down, pick it up, and let the excess fall off. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Y'all, these are so easy and they're so much fun for the kids. I love doing them with my grandkids. They can play in the peanut butter and lick it off their hands. It really doesn't matter. It's delicious. Once I got all of this on here, I did just kind of press this side into the leftover seeds that I had. And then once I had knocked off the excess, I took mine and put them in the freezer for a couple of hours. And this just helped it set up so that they didn't fall off once I got them out to the tree. Once you do that, this one is ready to hang for your feathered friends. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to throw it way back. We're going back to one of the first videos that I ever did where I made a hummingbird swing for my husband. I love these little swings and I wanted to be able to share them with you. Now I will ask that you ignore the recording. This was back way before we knew what we were doing, but I am going to speed it up a little bit for you and we'll do some voiceover. Now to make these little swings, I just went out in my yard and I grabbed some limbs. I got this pretty sturdy one and I cut it down to about eight inches, I guess. It doesn't matter, you make it as long as you want it. And then I also got some really flexible branches that I took off of a bush in my yard. You want to make sure that you can bend these really well. Now to make the sides of this, I'm going to take three of my little flexible limbs and I'm going to twist them together all the way up. And I didn't measure this, I made sure that it was a lot longer because I knew that I would rather have it too long than not long enough. Once I got it twisted, I put a little bit of glue on the end, and then we're gonna take some fine gauge wire. I got this from the Dollar Tree. It comes in this pack of three, and I'm gonna use the black because I think it blends in better. We will wrap it around one end and then just start wrapping it all the way up until we get it completely together. Now you didn't actually have to wrap your branches. You could just use the wire to hold the three together, but I really like how it looks when you twist them together. Once you get to the end, you're just gonna wrap it around several times and trim it off. Now we're gonna do one more for the other side in the same way. Now that we have our sides made, we're gonna take our little perch and we're going to join the sides together, making almost a cross at the very end of this. You're just gonna lay it over just like that. To hold this together, I'm gonna to use a little bit of wood glue. I love this Gorilla wood glue and a little bit of hot glue to hold it until the wood glue sets. I'm using a spatula and putting just a little bit on there and then sticking the side into it. And then to really make it sturdy, I'm gonna use some twine and wrap around it to hold it. I'll put a little more wood glue on the back of this as well as a little hot glue. 
then I'm going to stick my twine into my hot glue and just start wrapping it. You're going to do this in a crisscross fashion. And I went around several times until I knew it was held. And then I hold it with a little more hot glue. Now we'll do the same thing to the other side. Now we have our sides on our little perch. We're going to do the top. This is why these needed to be flexible. We're going to bend them over each other and then take a little wire and wrap around it. And now you have a swing. I want to go ahead and use my clippers and trim off these ends. I do want them to stick out, but not that much. And then once we get those ends trimmed off, we'll go to the bottom and straighten out those ends that stick off there as well. You just want to even those up. To cover that wire at the top, we're going to take another little piece of our twine and use a little bit of glue and glue that around there. Now that our swing is all put together, I want to decorate it a little bit for my birds. Hummingbirds love color. So I'm using some of these little pink flowers that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'll remove them and just glue some all around the swing. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is make a hanger for this. I'm going to use another little piece of twine. I fold it in half and tie a knot at the end, making a loop. Then you're just going to loop it around the top of your bird swing, pull the ends through the loop, tighten it up, and with that, this project will be finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this piece that I found at Goodwill this weekend. It was 50% off, so I got it for $3. I think it was originally a CD holder, but we're going to repurpose it for the base of a bird bath. This tray that I got from Goodwill, a solar fountain that I ordered from Amazon, a wood bead from my stash, some coulard I got from Ikea. I'm not real sure what this actually is some Gorilla Glue and some water to activate it, some Krylon spray paint, this is the paint and primer, some florals and ivy garland from Dollar Tree, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace the bead that was missing off of this base. I didn't have one that was the same size. This one is a little bit bigger. So I just put a little bit of paper in there to keep it a little bit tight. And then I just add some hot glue in there and replace it. And it works just fine. Now I'm going to take my tray and my base outside and spray it with my Krylon paint and primer. I did end up having to give it several light coats. Once this is dry, I want to decorate the edges of my tray. So I took this Coulort, I guess is how you say it. I have no idea how you really say it. I picked this up at Ikea a couple of years ago and I'm not really sure what it is. It looks like crushed glass, but it is not glass. You can see that I am rubbing it with my hands and it did not cut me in any way, but it is really um, flashy and it's really pretty once you put it on there. So I'm just taking my hot glue and I put a good coat around the edge of this and then dip it in there and I love how it looks. Now don't worry about it flaking off. I do, once this is dry, I take some Mod Podge and go over the top of this to seal it in so that it won't flake off into my water. We just keep doing this all the way around the edge of our tray and I love how this looked once it was finished. Now I want to decorate the base of my bird bath. So I'm going to use some of these ivy garlands that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to take one of my zip ties and zip it into place down there at the bottom. And then I just start twisting it around. I go in and out of the different little poles and go around through the middle and up another one. And I come back around at the top and come down. I just wanted to give it the look of an ivy growing on it. 
I was only going to use two of these, but once I got the two on there, I thought it needed one more just to give it that perfect balance. So I did end up using three of these. I just twisted around. I don't have a rhyme or reason. I just twisted it how I liked it, and then I would secure it with my zip ties and trim it off. Once I got all my garland on there, I took these pretty little pink flowers that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure what these are supposed to be. It just says flowering bush. Um, I liked that they were long and skinny and you could take them off of the base. So I would pull them off and then I did use the zip ties on some of it. Some of it I didn't have to. I could twist it into the ivy and it would stay in place. And then sometimes I would use just a little dab of hot glue to keep it in place. Um, again, I just kind of twisted it around until I liked how it looked. I didn't really have a rhyme or a reason, but I did only put this on two of the poles. I thought that if I put it on all four of them, it would be a little overwhelming. So I just kept it to the front ones and I really was pleased with how it came out. I am so loving all of these beautiful flowers this spring, and I think I'm even going to carry them over into summer. I'm just loving how fresh they make everything look. Now I had to move it down to the floor. I couldn't get a good camera angle and I was wanting to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue that tray onto this base. So I take a little bit of water and I just kind of dab it on top of those wooden beads. You don't want to soak them, you just want to dampen them. Then I take my Gorilla Glue and I put a good squirt of it on each one of these beads. And yes, you do need the water to activate the glue. Then I put my tray down on top of it and press it down and I'm going to leave it for at least 24 hours to cure. Once it's cured and set up, we'll just take it outside. We'll put our little floating fountain in there and fill it up with water. There is my bird bath outside. I love how this turned out. I do want to keep it over by the lake, but the wind was insane today. It was blowing it over, so I moved it up to the porch to try to get some pictures so I could show you how it looks. But here it is in all of its glory. I love this so much. You can see how bad the wind was. <laughs> I'm looking forward to when the wind calms down and I can get this in place and my little birdies can enjoy it all summer. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we are going to be using a bunch of this glassware that I got from different thrift stores. I've been collecting it for a while. There are some of these globes that, um, these all came from the same one. I'm assuming they came out of someone's house. And then I have this one that is a little bit different. It's kind of cone shaped. And I think that it would be beautiful. I am going to use this container. My grandmother had one of these that she kept fruit in on her table. And I found this one at the thrift store. It says $3, but I got it for half price. And I'm going to be using this tart plate that I got from the thrift store, as well as this candle holder. I'm gonna be stacking these all up. We're going to make some garden art um, from the clear glass. I think it would be really cool to have it in my garden. I'm also going to be using this clear seal liquid nails. I got it from Walmart and I paid like $4.97 for it, something like that. So we're going to use that to glue this all together, to seal it together. It's supposed to hold all this glass together, even outside. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these to the sink and give them a good washing. They're all really dirty. And then once I get them cleaned, I will come back and we will start building this. Now that our glass is clean and dry, we're going to start joining it together. I use a generous amount of my adhesive on the lip of this globe. And you can see I turned that fruit holder upside down so that I would have a sturdy base. And then I'm going to glue this right onto the bottom of it. 
I'm gonna be doing this in pieces and then let that cure and then we'll completely join it all together. I thought this would be a lot safer than adding all of these pieces together at once. I'm afraid that it would become unsteady. So I did the holder and one globe and then I did two of my globes together. And now I'm going to glue this candle holder right into the center of my tart plate. I did decide since I only had one more globe left to see if I could go ahead and add it to this bottom piece and it worked out just fine. Once I got these glued together, I set them aside to let them cure for about six to eight hours. Now it's been about six hours and this is holding together really well. So we're gonna go ahead and add our other pieces to it. I put a generous amount of my adhesive on my globes and then add that to the top of my bottom piece. This, the main trick to doing this is to make sure that you get pieces that will connect with each other. You want to make sure that you have a lot of surface that's going to connect so that your adhesive has something to join together. Now we put some more adhesive on our candle holder, put it right on top and set it aside to dry for about 24 hours. And there's our completed piece. I love how this turned out. Now it kind of looks a little crooked, but it's really not. The water is sitting level, so I know that it's straight. I think it's just the camera angle. This is such a beautiful way to use up some of that old glass that you find at the thrift store and keep it from going to the landfill. I think I am going to love having this in my garden this summer, and I know my birds and butterflies are going to love being able to use it. Hey y'all, it's Kay and Trish from Crafting Cousins. We're going to show you how to make this beautiful birdhouse planter. So grab some materials and let's craft y'all. The first thing we're going to do is give our birdhouse a good base coat of our white Waverly chalk paint. Then we're gonna take this spindle that we got from Habitat for Humanity and we're gonna use it to mount our birdhouse into our flower pot. We'll take it outside cut off this piece on the end and drill a hole in each end and then we'll give it a good coat of our white chalk paint. We knew our quick creek would have to set overnight so we mixed it up according to package directions and stuck our spindle down in our pot. The reason I drilled a hole in the bottom of this spindle is because there's a piece that sticks up in the bottom of my pot. I pour in my quick creek and leave it to set overnight. We purchased this beautiful paper from our local thrift store, and it is the inspiration for this entire piece. Not only did we pick the colors for each of our birdhouses from this paper, but we're also going to use it to cover one of our birdhouses as well. We use chalk paint in the colors celery, ballet slipper pink, maize, lavender, and a pale blue acrylic as well. We're going to first begin by painting each of the roofs of our houses. We're going to start with the yellow and the pink and the green. We will paint the front birdhouse in our beautiful lavender chalk paint. And our side birdhouse we're going to paint in this beautiful pale blue acrylic. We want to cover our largest birdhouse with our inspiration paper. We put down a good coat of our Mod Podge to the surface of our birdhouse then we take our paper and lightly mist it with some water and apply it to the surface, making sure that we smooth out any wrinkles or bubbles that may form. Once this dries, we're going to cover it with another coat of Mod Podge to protect the paper. The hardest part of this project was getting those paper pieces right. Kay used a piece of copy paper and cut out a pattern so we wouldn't waste our inspiration paper. Now we're going to plant our flowers. We take our potting soil and put it directly on top of our quick creek. Then we take the flowers that we got from Lowe's and plant around the spindle. I'm using miniature snapdragons and dianthus, but you can use anything that fits your decor. To attach our birdhouse to our spindle, we're going to use wood glue and a 9 by 9 scrap piece of lumber that we painted white, drilled a hole in the center, and used a wood screw to attach it to our spindle.
To attach our birdhouse to our base, we're going to use our wood glue and our hot glue, and that will give us our fast hold and our permanent hold. We'll just center it right there on the base. We wanted to make a courtyard for our birds by using some sheet moss and some miniature picket fencing that we got from Hobby Lobby. We'll just glue it right there onto the corner of our house. We decorate the courtyard by using some of these small flowers that we had in our stash. Then we finish up our yard by using some fairy garden accessories that we got from the Dollar Tree. We'll use these porcelain roses to add some architectural detail to our houses. And there's our finished piece. I love this piece. I think it's my favorite project to date. Hey y'all, it's Trish. This one is not going to be a DIY. It's just a bonus thing that I wanted to show you. Sometimes you can take any item from the thrift store and turn it into a birdhouse. I saw this adorable teapot and I knew it would be perfect. I wanted to use the lid on this, but I couldn't figure out a way to sit it on there to make it look right, so I ended up discarding it. I knew I wanted to hang the teapot with the spout down so that any water that got in it would drain out. Now I'm going to take a piece of twine. I think I got this from the Dollar Tree. I cut off a piece, fold it in half, push it through the handle and then pull the ends through the little loop that's there and pull it tight. Just that easy, I have a hanger. Now I did tie a knot in the end of this, but if you want to tie it around your limb, you're going to leave those ends loose and then tie them around it. And just that easy, you have a birdhouse. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.